Good evening and welcome to Power Moves, where we find ways to level up in our career, level up in our finances, and level up in life in general. It is so good to see you again this week. Um, tonight, we are talking about how to go from $8 an hour to $15 an hour. Um, this is part two in a series called Starting from the Bottom Fast Food Edition. Okay, and last week was part one where we talked about how to live independently on a fast food salary. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, go back and check that out before you watch this one. Okay, today we're going to talk about how to go to $8 an hour or below to $15 an hour. Okay, so we're going to try to move up, level up from working minimum wage. Um, and here are just a few pointers on how to do that. Okay, so how do you go from $8 an hour to $15 an hour? Well, as you saw in part one, we're assuming that you're now renting a room, you've got your lifestyle together, and you are sustaining yourself on $8 an hour, living independently. So we're gonna work out a plan tonight so that you can go from $8 to 15 by going step by step in this plan. You need to work your plan and trust the process in order to get where you need to go, okay? So, number one, do extensive research on the type of job you want to have. This is important because our plan um, is assuming that you're going to educate yourself or find a way to pay for education and you're already working on $8 an hour. You don't have time to waste. Uh, going into education for something that's not going to help you level up in real life. So do extensive research on the type of job you want to have. Watch videos made by people who are in the field you want to go into. Uh, how much money is the entry level salary? You need to know that. How is a, what is a typical day in the life of a person with that job? You need to know that also. You can find a lot of this stuff on YouTube and Google. Um, I, I suggest doing as much research as possible. This is important. This is going to be the career that you want to have. It's going to be the job that you're going into work every day. This is going to be how you provide for yourself, your family, and your loved ones. It's extremely important. You just don't want to just throw your caution to the wind. You want to be prepared, okay? So what is a typical, okay, we did that. There, these are all important because you don't want to waste your time and money. Like I said, pursuing a career that is not going to pay enough for you to provide yourself with the lifestyle you want, okay? The lifestyle you want, you're going to have to work for it. There's no point in doing extra work um, because you haven't done your research. So do extensive research. Um, take advantage of your job's tuition assistance program. That's number two. There are tons of fast food restaurants that offer tuition assistance programs. So if you're starting from the bottom, you need to make sure you're at one of these restaurants. Or if you're already there, you need to ask your manager about the programs. Okay. Here are a few restaurants that offer tuition assistance. There are hundreds. I'm just going to name a few tonight. But Google them and do your research and you will see that if you're working fast food in some capacity, you're probably going to have a tuition assistance program at your job, okay? Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, KFC, Chili's, Marco's Pizza, McDonald's, Starbucks, Papa John's, to name a few. There are tons and tons more. You can find many more online. Some offer grants and some offer tuition discounts. So the type of tuition assistance varies from restaurant to restaurant. But again, so, so many of them offer tuition assistance. I It would behoove you to take advantage of that, okay? Also, look for scholarships and grants to further supplement your tuition assistance because some of the programs are not going to fully 100% cover the classes that you want to take. Okay, so you're going to have to supplement that. Again, you're working for $8 an hour, even if you're pulling overtime. Be nice to yourself. Help yourself out. Apply for the hundreds and hundreds of scholarships they have out there. Um, you're sure to get some type of help. Um, do your research and check with your manager for details. Also, look into scholarships uh, that to further supplement your tuition assistance and relieve the burden of your tuition since money is tight at this point because we're working from starting from the bottom you're going to need all the help you can get and if you do this right you could get your degree for next to nothing 
There are so many scholarships out there that go, no one competes for them, no one uses them. You should make it your job every day at this point to apply, apply, apply. Rack up on those scholarships, okay? It makes a huge difference. So number two is take advantage of your job's tuition assistance program. Number three, dedicate your time to study and school in order to earn your associates or bachelors. If you are working full time and overtime like we discussed in part one, you are really going to have to ration out your remaining free time very carefully. That means no chilling out and watching Netflix. That means um, not spending too much time playing video games. You're going to have to ration your time carefully, okay? You're going to have to ration it carefully. Since we are in the middle of a pandemic, lots of classes are being made available to take online. That makes things a little easier since you can come home, right home, log in, and instead of having, to, you can log into your classes when you get home from work. Instead of having to get dressed, fight traffic, and walk across campus, but if you are required to take classes in person, then it might help to relegate your nights to classes and note taking, okay? And then your weekends to study. So if you can't just log into your classes online, uh, you can't just come home and log in and, and take notes. If you have to meet in person, then the best bet might be for you to relegate your nights just completely to classwork and taking notes. That way you can come home, get some rest, get up to your job the next day, okay? Do all of the other stuff, the projects, the research, the paper writing, all of that on Saturday, Sunday, and Friday. That might be what works for you if you have to be at class in person and work during the day. Um, what is it? Um, you know best how to ration your free time and create a schedule that works for you. You know best. So, you know, examine your schedule and make it happen. Just find time, whatever free time you have to dedicate to school, write your schedule out and commit to it, okay? It's going to take some sacrifice in order for you to get where you want to go. So you're going to have to kind of keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to do everything you want to do. So that was number three, dedicate your free time to study and school. Number four, start interviewing. Start interviewing, okay? So now you are you almost have your degree or you already graduated with your degree or your certificate or your associates. Start interviewing. Because of COVID, more and more businesses are making virtual interviews available. This will be easier for you because you won't have to take time off of your job to go into someone's office and interview. You can interview from your car or at home in your room before or after work. If you do have to take time off to go in, okay, if you have to meet people in person, then make sure you book your interviews back to back so you can maximize your free time. Okay, so that means you know, if you have to see them in person, you can't keep going to your job and taking days off and time off and days off to do interviews. So it would behoove you to list all of the, the interviews that want you to come in in person, ask them to schedule a specific day, a specific time so that you can get off of one and go to the other and get off of one and go to the other. Okay, lump them together if you have to do it in person interviews. Okay, that will cause less drama on your job and it will help you in the long run because you're not going to be running here and there um, and being distracted and not really doing a good interview. So start interviewing. Okay, next step, start a job that pays at least $15 an hour. If you're get some associate's degrees and most bachelor degrees are going to get you an entry job that is at least $15 an hour, at least here in the Charlotte market. Okay, I'm not sure how it goes everywhere else in the world, but you should be at least able to get start at $15 an hour fresh out of school. That is the entry level rate. Okay, so don't move just yet. All right, so in part one, you established a place to live. I suggested renting a room because that's more affordable for someone who's making eight dollars an hour. Don't don't move all the you know out to a luxury apartment just yet. What you want to do is give yourself time to adjust and save up some money. If you're comfortable where you're at, you should stay. Okay, 
stay at your current living situation and use the extra money to start saving. Try to get a savings account that has the highest interest possible. That way you are maximizing your opportunity to save. Make sure you set up an automatic draft from your checking to your savings account so that you don't even have to think about it because it is much easier to part with your money when you're when you don't have to think about it okay and that goes for people who aren't working minimum wage that goes for people that goes for everyone okay set up automatic savings draft so that you're automatically moving money you don't have to stop you don't have to think about it and you don't have to reject the idea because that's what we're trying to not get you to do and if you're not thinking about it you can't say I don't want to do it okay start saving money also don't move out just yet save the money the extra stuff that you're if you're a rent if you're renting a room in a house and it's six hundred dollars okay take that extra money you're probably like a thousand dollars five hundred dollars more than that and put that in savings build a nice nest egg okay we don't want you to just move right away don't do that okay so start a job that pays at least fifteen dollars an hour and lastly save up for and purchase a car but please don't go crazy it's all right now now we established that we're not using a car on eight dollars an hour so last week if you listen to the video from last week we said we're riding the bus okay we're not using a car we don't need a car right now we need to save money okay now you can buy a car but I'm saying please don't go crazy it is best to save up a few thousand dollars and buy a used car or down payment with only a few thousand to pay off the most fragile parts of life are right after a transition okay and right now you just transition to minimum wage to living wage so you don't want to do too much right now because that's the most fragile time in your life it's after a transition and you may and you my friend have just transitioned so take it easy and drive a sensible used car until you're a few months or even a year into your new job then you can reevaluate and see whether or not you're ready to commit to 15 years or more of paying a monthly car payment and those of you who already paid their car off me included I don't want another car payment. I'm living comfortably right now and I can afford it and I still don't want it. Okay? I don't want another car payment. I'm going to drive my car until it turns to a pile of nuts and bolts. Okay? And I think that's what everyone should be doing instead of just jumping into the new thing. Unless you're going to splurge and treat yourself, which is understandable. Um, it's most uh, efficient to just use a sensible car and use the money that would have gone to paying the monthly car bill and put it into savings or do something else with it, okay? So this evening, we talked about how to go from $8 an hour to $15 an hour. It was number one, do extensive research on the type of job you wanna have. Number two, take advantage of your job's tuition assistance program. Number three, dedicate your time to study and school. Number four, start interviewing. Number five, start a job that pays at least $15 an hour. And number six, save up for and purchase a used car. Okay, tune in next week, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're going to be talking about part three of the Starting from the Bottom series. That'll be the last part. And that's where you go from living wage to a more comfortable wage, okay? So you don't wanna miss that, tune in. If you have any questions or you have suggestions for show uh, subtopics, I would love to hear from you. You can catch me um, on my website at karenmack.com. That's K-A-R-O-N-M-A-C-K.com. Um, and you can contact me there. You can also add me on Facebook at Karen Mack on Facebook or Karen underscore Mac on Instagram. I will be there. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit that like, share, subscribe button. Uh, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I will talk to you all next week.